Hello. Welcome to the Tabletop Podcast, episode one. Finally here. It's finally here. Oh, it's been a long time coming, isn't it, Kurt? It really has. Oh, this is a um, this is a first for both of us, I think. This is a, a new new territory. Definitely. Uh, the, this podcast, I guess, has been an idea of both of us for quite a while now. I think we found ourselves sitting on Xbox till whatever time in the morning, just waffling about absolutely anything. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> one night, I think we just looked at each other, then we? we just went, we we can make a podcast out of this. So here we are. <laughs> here we are, here we are Kurt. Um, I thought a good place to start would be to briefly mention a little bit about us, about how we met, almost. I mean, it's a pretty boring story. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess if we're on the same wavelength here, I mean, we really met, what, back at, back at rugby when we were, God, a few years ago yeah, now, was not it? I've got a fun story about that, actually. I'm, when you joined the school and they said Alex is joining, I didn't know who you were, and I went, which one is Alex? This one is Alex. <laughs> and everyone was trying to explain to me which one you were. And when you arrived, you were the one that I didn't think you were. Well, let's put this into context here. I'd played rugby with Kurt at Basel Rugby Club for quite a long time before <laughs> this moment. And he did not have a clue where I was. The one thing people will realise about me is I'm terrible with names. Terrible like, with names. <laughs> I, ge- I genuinely remember playing rugby with the same people for two years and struggling to remember their names in the game. So I'm like, just pass me the ball. Pass me the- Yes, you. <laughs> yes, you. Give me the ball. <laughs> that is true. I mean, you even do that now, don't you? I do, yeah. Forget my name sometimes. The only, the only name I remember really is just my own. My own name. <laughs> yep, that is true. Well, Kurt, something I've been seeing a lot of coming up in the news recently. I was to see it recently on um, this morning. It's at Holly Willoughby and um, oh yeah, was about influencers, social media influencers, making their way over to Dubai during this. Yeah, a lot of YouTubers lockdown. doing it. As yeah, well. during this lockdown. So again, with a bit of perspective. On the day of making this, the UK is currently in full national lockdown. Uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic. And there is influencers, Instagram influencers, YouTubers flying out to Dubai for what they are claiming is essential work. Yes. What are your thoughts on this, Kurt? I've never known... Essential work to count as flying to Dubai and having fun in the sun. Yeah. Now, we've also discussed this in private, and we've agreed that although we will say bad stuff, if somebody is willing to sponsor us to go to Dubai and film a podcast, we won't deny the sponsor. We will go with happy. 100%. Yeah. We, why not? It is essential work at the end of the day, it isn't it, is. We'll sit next to a pool, and we can call it... Pool talk. The pool talk, yeah. No, I think I think real talk. It is getting a bit out of hand, isn't it? I it mean, really the, is, the, yeah. the lady I saw on this morning Roy basically Hamill. spent 20 minutes trying to explain and excuse herself as to why she flew out to Dubai during a pandemic by explaining basically that she could do her job from her bedroom, but that her followers wanted to see her in the sun. Now, personally here, I don't watch a lot of YouTubers like this, but if I'm in the middle of a pandemic and one of my favourite YouTubers has flown out to Dubai and is doing what they usually do in their home in a nice sunny country free of lockdown, that's going to annoy me even more, I think. I think I'm going to be less inclined to want to watch them. Yeah. I mean, it makes no sense. Like, the videos that she was putting up, I remember because I saw one of them, it was just riding a camel. Like, I'm sorry, but who needs to see this? That like, is, that is, a very, that is a very good point. Lots of the videos she makes are workout videos that she's doing from her hotel living room. Again, I can't see why she can't do that at home. Yep. Um, and yeah, don't get me wrong. There's probably an audience there, but let's be real. 
it's not essential work. I do agree, but at the same time, I also have to point out that Good Morning Britain had Boris on and didn't grill him about any of this stuff, people flying away. They just had a nice selfie and moved on. Yep, that is true. They were getting a bit close, weren't they? No, everything everything today is a little bit backwards, I think. Yeah. Um, I think that moves us nicely onto our first um, suggestion. Now, we put a poll, or not a poll, we put some questions out on our Instagram earlier this week, and we were more expecting to get a couple of our friends put some silly responses in, um, which... Let's be honest, most of them were, wasn't they? True, <laughs> most of yeah. them were. Um, most of them were asking us silly questions. But there was there was a few quite good suggestions that we can talk about. And the one we want to talk about today, I don't think me and Kurt really planned to go this into depth with. Okay. But I think it will make a good subject. Mm. So um, the first suggestion we had was to discuss the toxicity of young people on social media. Now, personally, I think this is quite a big issue. Yes, it is. Um, I'm going to refer quite a lot to a a documentary on Netflix. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, Kurt. I don't think you have. But um, it's called The Social Dilemma. It's only come out recently. I only watch funny documentaries. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, fair enough. Um, well, this particular documentary I found quite was quite interesting. Um, basically, this got a bunch of people, ex-employees from big social media companies. You had people from Twitter, Google, Facebook, Instagram. They people who had left their jobs for these massive social media companies, and they spend an hour and a half discussing what their issues were with it, basically. And um, I think it's pretty clear to see that nowadays, especially in the last 10, 15 years, there has been a big issue around young people using social media. Now, don't get me wrong, social media has brought around some good. I mean, you can imagine that they didn't make these platforms originally to harm young people yeah. harm anybody in general um but it has brought about some good hasn't it social media i mean um charities yeah charities right. is, is you can spread businesses i mean even going as deep as to saying people have found organ donors on social media people have found um and been reunited with old family members on social media so it has brought around some good but recently especially with the newer generations, yeah, um, it's become very, very toxic, hasn't it? Let's I'll be agree. Honest. Yeah, yeah. I think one thing that we also need to think about though, is when these were made like 10, 15 years ago, they probably wasn't expecting it to be as big as it is now. Yeah, that's but true. if you go, any teenager has an Instagram, Snapchat, like pretty much every single one. Yeah, and people are getting into it younger and younger as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean. If I go back to when me and you were probably 10, 11, 12, I mean, I know I didn't get, I don't know if I was weird for this or or anything, but I didn't have a smartphone I until did. I went to senior school, until yeah. I was in year seven. And even then, I couldn't really do much on it. I mean, back then we were using BBM. Um, you know, I had a Blackberry all the way through primary school, but going into senior school, I didn't have a smartphone until then. And even then, it probably wasn't until year eight, year nine, which you would have been, what, 13, 14 years old, that I got any social medias like Snapchat. But when I look at family members and friends with younger siblings, it seems to be becoming the norm younger and younger. I see kids on the street as young as like seven, eight, and nine walking around with the brand new iPhones. Um, and I'm just thinking, what, why? <laughs> what, what need have you to be using social media that young? But I think that is one of the biggest issues, is these social media platforms are targeting younger people. And 
the way the they run these platforms, they don't exactly promote positivity. Yeah. See, I think another thing is, obviously, we're all in a national lockdown. You know, we can't go hang out with our friends. Yeah. The only way we can really communicate with our friends yeah. is through, you know, your social media, yeah. playing online. Yeah, and I think I think that's a, that is a good that's aspect a, to to some extent because while we're being told to stay indoors it is quite nice to be in this modern era with a lot of technology that you don't have to go without speaking to your friends or even seeing your friends because there are so many there is lists and lists of apps and social media platforms where you can video call you can talk to friends over everything i just think that well, I'm going to speak specifically a bit more about Facebook and Instagram because they're two platforms, well, I probably use the most. Yeah, they are the biggest. And they are probably the two that they speak about the most in this documentary. Um, I think something we should probably touch on here is is Instagram and all the likes and stuff like that they have on, on Instagram. Now, again, personally, when I post a photo on Instagram, I'm not exactly bothered if my last post had 50 likes and my new post has got 40 likes mm. yeah but a lot of people rely on almost likes just to just yeah. to see how where they are how, yeah how popular and that is that is what i wanted to to bring up it's become such a toxic place for young people because especially the people a lot younger than us lots of them see their own self-worth almost in how many likes they can get on an Instagram post. And because, you know, we might not be directly affected by it, but there are people who are directly affected when they put a post up and it doesn't do as good as they thought. Yeah, it is very true. They'll, they'll beat themselves up over it. And I mean, I've just got some stats here. I've just got some stats over, it, it's probably a bit deep, but is suicide, the, the rate of suicide in the UK, um, of ages between 10 and 25, in the last 15 years, has increased by over 56% in the last 15 years. Now, to put that into perspective, Facebook was created, what, 18 years ago? 18 years ago, probably blew up within the last 15 years. Instagram was created in the last 15 years. Snapchat was created in the last 15 years. Twitter was created in the last 15 years. All of these social media platforms were created in that time span. Now, I'm not saying that there's a direct correlation between these it's, social media it's platforms. It's impossible to prove, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> you, you probably, you can, I mean, there's studies out there that, that can show it, but. Oh, yeah. There is a, there's got to be a correlation there somewhere more and more young people are you, you will struggle to f go to any school any college even any university and find somebody who doesn't have an instagram account who doesn't have a snapchat account, oh it's impossible who doesn't it? have it's a face honest. yeah it is it is impossible and we're in this new era now where lots of people find their self-worth in how many likes they can get on an instagram post and as you can see by the numbers it is seriously affecting people and now more than ever, during a, a global pandemic, when the suicide rate is and, and rates of depression, especially in young people, is soaring so highly, it, it's a major issue at the end of the day. It is a major, major issue. And I don't think, and it's been proven in this documentary, there is not enough being done by these social media platforms to combat this. They are addictive platforms but there's no nobody in these uh platforms working against uh people being addicted to these to posting photos on instagram there is there is nothing there's nothing going on behind the scenes to to help this because places like facebook and instagram they are revolved around clicks they are revolved around likes they're revolved around usage they they're not worrying if a 14-year-old boy is, has ended his own life because he's been bullied in the comment section because he only had 
25 likes when his mates were getting 100, 200, 300 likes. You know, it's... Yeah. Like, I think the one thing we have to think, though, is obviously the population has risen a lot in the last 50 years, I'd say. Yeah. Like, it's gone up a lot. So that, that is a lot of the reason why I'd yeah. say these stats yeah. are going a lot higher. That, obviously, there is, like, there there is, is a lot... lot of, other there's things. a lot of other factors into it, but I I think there's not really anywhere where we can say that that's the reason. social yeah that yeah. social media didn't have well, something to do with it. Now, when we talk about Facebook, one of the I've recently just taken myself off of Facebook because you, I still use Messenger because I I message you on Messenger. I've, I've yeah. got them in lots of groups, but Facebook itself, I have found myself fallen apart just reading especially around specific topics like politics and even with this whole pandemic going on right now i found myself scrolling endlessly for hours and hours even having arguments with people i don't know over subjects that have nothing to do with me um and one of the biggest points uh, on the social dilemma is how these I said earlier how these places rely on clicks and likes and usage to run their platforms. Facebook has become a place now where they are sacrificing real, actual facts and news with fake stories that will get them more clicks. Yeah. They explained that the algorithm on Facebook works where instead of them promoting the right things instead of promoting positive news stories, instead of promoting posts that will give you facts, they will just promote the post that they think you will click on. So if you are somebody who in the past has clicked on all sorts of videos and news stories about flat earth theories and the coronavirus being a complete myth and all stuff like this, you are more likely to see a news story on Facebook that will promote fake news because they know you're going to click on that link. If they, they could say anything at all, they could, they could be a news story about Donald Trump being a cyborg alien lizard from outer space, and they know that because you're into conspiracy theories, because you click on all of these different news articles, that news article is not real in any way. They have oh, no yeah, proof. No. They have no studies. They, it's not factual in any way. But they will share it for you over actual factual news stories because you will click on it. And it's pulling people apart. Yeah, I would say it becomes the argument, though, is it Facebook's fault? At the end of that, it's a big company that's just all it's trying to do is get views and that's and people know this whose job is it to say don't do that because there's no one above facebook someone there's like the only person is that mark zuckerberg yeah i don't think he's too bothered yeah i guess i guess in some respect if this was any other business at the end of the day they are a business they want money yeah. they want clicks they want people to use it but on a platform like facebook where it is one of, I'm not sure if it is the biggest platform, but let's be honest, it is one of the wow. biggest social media platforms in the world and has been for many years. They have billions of users. There has got to be some sort of moral side here where they, they at the same time they're trying to make money, they should also know that they have got one, two, three billion users on the website that they've got to be careful about this sort of thing because... I've said it myself, but I don't know about you, Kurt. Have you ever found yourself scrolling through a post on Facebook that you might not agree about, and you just think, I'm going to check the comments here, and it's full of people who don't agree with your political statements, they don't agree with what you believe in, but arguments, hundreds and hundreds just of arguing. comments, I arguing everywhere. The problem is at the moment as well, is the way we've got to look at it, is everyone is bored. Exactly. So, oh, and let's be honest, the most entertaining thing is to watch almost an argument break out like, let's be honest if you're on a street and there's an argument in the middle of the street 90 percent of the people in their houses will be like looking at their window yeah oh well, you love it didn't you yeah. if somebody has an argument on my street outside my house everyone's got their heads out the window, haven't they? It, you know what I mean? everyone's it's watching news at the end of that it's like the newest thing you're gonna see yeah. it's just, it doesn't affect you but what you don't know is how it's affecting the people 
that are in the argument. Yep. But I'd also argue, why are they arguing on Facebook if they know what they're like? What they're arguing about doesn't matter in the long run. Because yeah. let's say even if they argue with the person, they change that person's mind. That's one person. There's about like you know fifty thousand comments. You're only changing one person's mind. Is it really worth the hassle of arguing for like hours for a Facebook comment section that no one's really bothered about just to get your point across to someone? Yeah. Um. I mean, it's a very valid point. Um. But I guess that that brings us to the the main problem as to why there is so much fake news about at the moment and. I guess too many people in the modern era are too concerned about being right than actually speaking facts. They're too concerned yeah. about winning than actually being correct about what they are saying. So I think that's what sparks most of the arguments because you've got two sides of the story, however factual and however fake, that both think their views are perfectly fine. But they can't accept that somebody else can think differently to them. Whether or not it's fact or not, they're having an argument because they need to be right. Mm. And that's half the reason it's so Plus, toxic. Because people people pe are like being wrong. Yeah, people, yeah, people yeah. thrive over it, don't they? People yeah. thrive over being right in a situation. And it, it increases stuff like anxiety. If you are on Facebook constantly arguing with somebody who doesn't believe what you believe, you're constantly in a state of thinking that you might be in the wrong. Or, on the other hand, you're in a state where you think everything you say is right, right and, and correct. That's also And that is also state. not good. There needs to be a happy middle ground where people are allowed to disagree with each other without having an argument. Mm. Now, there is subjects out there that you cannot argue against. Yeah, there, is, there, is, there is stuff that there is a right and wrong. But yeah. when it comes to political opinions... There's no correct answer yeah. at the end of the it, day. You, you believe and you listen to who you want to at the end yeah. of the day. We all have our different views on things. If you think differently to me, that's not the end of the world. We're not going to have a fight over it. But Facebook is full of it. And especially when it starts bringing in your under-25s, it can seriously affect somebody's self-esteem and morality almost to be keep being told that their view is wrong yeah. because they don't believe the same as some American bloke across the pond thinks. It's it's a completely different situation yeah. isn't it, at the end of the day. Now, the sort of thing is like taking a step back from Facebook like you have for example. It's a really good idea but a lot of people just can't do that yeah. and because they're too... Yeah like concentrate this all they do yeah like, there are people who don't have other things to do yeah and that, that, that's doing it. that brings us back to the point about the how addictive these things are they they are designed to show you exactly what you want to see at the exact time you want to see it they know and the algorithm documents times that you log on to the app they know when you are most likely to be scrolling through and they know when to show you the right things they're doing everything right to keep you scrolling to keep you engaged in what they're doing. And that wouldn't be so much of a problem if what they were engaging you in Was, wasn't so yeah. wrong. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody wants to keep engaged. We're making a podcast, for God's sake. If we wanted, you know, at the end of the day, we're making this so that people will sit listen. and hopefully listen to what we've got to say. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there is some stuff we could say that would make people listen. We could have full-blown debates about some very controversial topics that, don't get me Which wrong. we do. Yeah, it will... It will get us clicks. People will click on the videos. Mm. People will listen to them because we'll be enraging everyone that listens. That doesn't make it right, though. Yeah. And that's exactly what Instagram, that's exactly what Facebook is doing. They're showing you what you want to see, when you want to see it, without you even knowing. And it keeps you on the app. And it's just, it's just a, a very toxic place because you can simply, you can struggle to go on Facebook and scroll through without finding people arguing, without finding something political, without finding something that you disagree with, or, better yet, something fake. It's impossible, isn't it? It is completely impossible. Oh, I could load up days. Facebook right now, and I reckon within three, four minutes, I could see an argument. Genuinely, load up Facebook, and please, please give it. I will do the same. 
while we're talking, I will scroll through Facebook and I will see how long it takes me to find an argument. It won't take Honestly, very long. It is, it is a very, very ridiculous subject. Here we go. Here we are. <laughs> Genuinely, that was what? Four or five seconds? I've come past. I've got an ad from KFC. Yes, it is sponsoring Veganuary. Yeah, now me and you have pr pretty differing views on this sort of stuff, don't we? Yes, we do. They are promoting their vegan burger. Now, you might have a differing view on it, but does this hurt your feelings for KFC to be doing this? No. Does this affect anybody directly by them supporting this? Not really. Now, if you go into the comment section, all There's you can see somebody. is people arguing about being vegan, about going veggie. I've now had an argument as well, by the way. There we go. There we go, then. What's your argument about, Kurt? Oh, I don't even... What is it? It's about the Superhero Club. The Superhero so it's Club. So it's a group chat called the Superhero Club, and people are asking about what happened to equality. To equality. Because they're on about a woman standing up on a bus in this picture. Yep. Just a normal picture of a woman. It's a, it's a stock photo. Of yeah. a woman standing up in a bus and people are moaning about equality. Because it but there's seats behind her. Nobody's saying about that. But, no. You know, somebody's treated. Yeah, and exactly. And at the end of the day, that have spurred from somebody or multiple people being feeling directly affected by something they shouldn't be and wanting to prove a point that necessarily isn't appropriate. And I think the only thing we can say as normal civilians almost is if anybody listening finds himself scrolling through facebook endlessly arguing with whoever they want about whatever if you find yourself posting a image on instagram and feeling down afterwards because you haven't got the likes that you wanted or you go on snapchat and you don't necessarily have the people you want talking to you or you're not getting the same response by something you've posted. And it goes for any social media. If you find yourself in that situation, you've just got to try and build up a bit of mental resilience. Like I said, when I took myself off of Facebook, there is a lot of stuff, especially with Apple products, because I don't really use anything else, where you can limit your usage. There is, there's a big thing on iPhones where you can limit your screen time. So if that means limiting how much time you spend on Facebook every day, then it does. And you might be bored, but especially in a pandemic, it's probably a lot healthier for your mental state to find something else to keep you occupied rather than doing it. Because everybody is struggling at the moment, some more than others, but everybody is struggling with this pandemic. And the last thing you want to do is dig yourself a bigger hole by forcing yourself and scrolling through Facebook. And I appreciate that it is, it is seen as an addiction. There is, it's seen as an addiction and addiction is that that's a, that's almost an entire new topic completely. And oh, yeah. it's, you know, I've luckily, I don't think I've ever been addicted to anything before in my life so far, but I can understand that it's probably a, a very hard situation to be in and to get out of. But all I can say is if you find yourself in that situation, try and help yourself, try and keep yourself off of it. Even if it's, if you're finding yourself on Facebook for four hours a day, try and keep yourself on it for three hours a day for this week and two hours a day for the next week. It's the thing, screen time, everyone's screen time. Yeah. Like, it's the worst thing to look at for me. Cause I'll look at it and go, how have I spent? Yeah that many hours i think a lot of people will agree with you i think a lot of people will agree with you and it is yeah it's a tough subject and we could probably get on to some of these in in a future podcast um but for now i mean we've got quite a few other stuff we want to talk about so i'll try and be quick but for now if there's any advice for anyone who's struggling with it just take a step back yeah take a step back try and limit yourself if you see yourself falling into the pit it's exactly what the social media platforms want you to do. 
Now, I'm not at all telling you to take yourself off of these platforms. I'm yeah. not at all telling you to... Self-isolating, yeah. like, on your own, not talking to nobody. Yes. Yeah. I could be as well. So. Yeah, exactly. You can do two extremes. Your own head that. Don't, don't take yourself off of these platforms. Don't stop talking to people. Don't stop using them because, like we said at the start, they can be used for good. But limit yourself. Take a step back, as Kurt said, and try and find other things that might be a bit healthier because everyone needs to help each other in this situation. We're all struggling. So the more you can do to help yourself, if you keep yourself off of Facebook for an extra hour, that might be an argument that you stop with somebody else. And that person might then stop having an argument with somebody else. And it might have a lingering effect of multiple different people and you'd have no idea about it. The healthy thing to do is to try and limit yourself and just take a step back well i'd say we covered that pretty well <laughs> i mean i uh, when we come up with the idea of this podcast uh, i i don't think we thought we were going to be talking about this sort of stuff did we no. um i mean original ideas were we were going to have a very sporty podcast weren't we we were going to maybe yeah, we were going to talk about you know everything and everything but yeah when we said that i don't think we thought that this would be the sort of yeah I think we were we were taken back a little bit when we got this suggestion because we wasn't really expecting such a a, a difficult topic. It is a difficult topic it to is talk a about. Topic at the end of the day, because you can't say the wrong thing. Yeah. And people are listening. And I mean, at the end of the day, me and you, we're not the most like, you know, we haven't got a big following. Yeah, exactly. So our like voices aren't going to be, like, people aren't going to listen to what we say and like, set in stone. Yeah. But, the best way we can possibly say it, I'd say, is just take a step back, talk to one of your mates. It's, even though you might not think like you've had an argument or something, just talk to somebody. Yeah. Like the amount of times me and Alex have probably spoken where one of us had an argument about something, and yeah. we're not in a good mood to talk, but one of the other one will just spam yeah. him with messages. Just going, yeah. come on, speak up. Yep. What's wrong? It is, it is a fair point, but um, I'd like to think we've covered it quite I think, yeah. nicely. I think, we've done good. Uh, I think the best thing we can do now, Kurt, is yeah. move on to a bit more of a, a light, topic. a lighter, happier topic. Yeah. Now, um, monkey flip. I've, <laughs> I've got a a game that I would like to play with you. Now, I'm just quickly going to get a list up. Um, I th I'm works. thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking that we could make this a weekly thing. We could make this a weekly thing now. I've sort of robbed a couple of ideas from loads of different podcasts that I listen to, but um, this one I thought is, is a very simple rating game. So every week I'm going to think of a topic or a subject and I'm going to give you a list of things and simply all I want you to do is rate them and maybe maybe I'll ask for a reason. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, um, one of the suggestions I thought was a little bit of a joke on our Instagram, but I thought we could probably fit this into the podcast. So one of the suggestions to a topic we could talk about, was sandwiches. <laughs> now, oh, I yeah. thought, what better way to kick off this game than getting you to rate meal deal sandwiches? Now, I don't know about you, but I think you can tell a lot about someone by their meal deal. So yeah. I think I'm going to start off, Kurt. Yeah. What, what is your meal deal? You're going out on a Saturday, you've got a busy day ahead, you need to pop to Tesco and pick yourself a meal deal up. What are you getting? Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with this, right? I don't get meal deals very often, <laughs> right? And the only sh shop I've ever bought meal deals from regularly was a one-stop shop and a Morrison's. Now, obviously, Tesco's, they're, all, they're pretty similar meal deals at the end of the day. Yeah, they're all but pretty one similar. one-stop is owned by Tesco, so they're pretty similar. But I'd say... I'm very basic, you know. I love a ham and cheese sandwich because I love cheese. Okay. Love a bit of ham. Do you like that? And then I'd say snack. It depends how I'm feeling. If I'm hungry, you know, which is normally the when you yeah. get a meal. Yeah. Deal, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really eat when you're not hungry, do you? <laughs> to be honest. Sometimes I do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Comfort eating. Yeah. No, I'd say I'd normally get like a. Twix, like a nice Twix. Oh, going with a going with a snack, not a packet of crisps. You see, see, that's the thing. I'm not a big crisp person. 
All right. I'm not Fair a big enough. fan of mixing it up. You know, so I'll probably go for like a Twix and then if if I've got a long day ahead of me and I can refill my bottle, I'll get sank with a cap. Yep. So I'd get um a Lucas Aid. Like, yep. No, not the fizzy one. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'd yep. get that. Sporty one. Yeah, the sport drink. But if I've like got a can, it has to be an original monster. Okay. All right, yeah. Now when I went Morrison's because obviously, when I go Morrison's, it's a completely different question. I know yeah, the Morrison's they, meal deal. They've got some pretty good meal deals in Morrison's. They do. You that. But what I do is I almost cheat the system. Now, I briefly told you I cheat yep. the system. You <laughs> wanted to know more. Yes. But I didn't tell you. So, in Morrison's, you can get like a fresh pasta pot, like, like a pot, yep. a ready made pot of spicy chicken pasta. Right. Now, it's good, it is nice. But. If you go and get yourself one of them like, big boxes and it's like a meal deal thing, it's like a medium-sized box. It's about twice the size of a pasta pot. But they sell the pasta in them. Uh-huh. So if I go over, I could get that amount of pasta and then I can get extra things. So <laughs> I like to go in Morrison's and get one of them. And by the time I've filled that up, it will probably be worth about, one and a half, maybe two pasta pots. So I feel like I cheat the system because I pay the same for nearly double. And I'd argue because it's fresh, it's even better. Yeah. I mean, for somebody who doesn't eat meal deals very often, you you know your, you know your stuff, like, mate. <laughs> it was college. I was in new college, new area. I didn't know any. I didn't know where anything was in Grays. Yeah. Walking around, I see a massive Morrison's, and I'm like. There's got to be something good in there. I haven't been in the Morrison's in years. Yeah. And then I was with some kid, um, not going to name names, but I was with him and he just started getting a meal deal and I was like, I'm going to follow him, just see what he's up to. And he showed me the size of the pot that you get if you get a fresh meal and you choose what goes in it. And ever and since then, it. Mind was day. set. But the problem is, is because it is so nice, people just, it's gone. Yeah. Like the amount of times I've showed up to get a nice chicken spicy pasta meal deal thing and it's not there, it's heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. It's so sad. Yeah. Because then you've got to walk all the way back to your college knowing you haven't got the food that you want. Yeah, that's true. And just sit there and just like your, your own <laughs> sadness. Yeah. <laughs> big sad, big sad. Um, I mean, I should probably save myself. Um, yeah, go on. It's a bit different recently because I've, well, I wouldn't say recently, but in the, in the last year or two, I've become vegetarian. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, we won't go into that, but um, my go-to, well, it, it depends, it depends, because most of the time I only get a meal deal when I've got a nice early rugby game, away game, something to eat on a coach on the way there, if you know. Sounds good, um, yeah. In that case, it's pretty boring because there's not a lot of choice. Most of the pasta pots and stuff have chicken and all sorts in it. So I just get a little pot of cheese and tomato pasta. Usually, well, I, I don't really get anything else apart from Thai sweet chilli McCoys. Mate, Great. I'm in love with them. When I love say it. I'm a crisp person, I'm a, I'm a crisp person. Um, and on game day, it's usually quite early morning, 7 a.m. in the morning. I'll probably get a Red Bull or something. Wake me up a bit on the way to a game. Um, apart if I'm doing it for leisure and I've got a busy day at work, I need to pick up a meal deal. I think I've found recently Tesco do these plant chef. Um, they're like fake duck hoisin wraps, mate. Honestly, You're big fan. they are. They are beautiful, beautiful. Again. Thai sweet chili crisps, and probably either with a cherry Pepsi Max, if I'm that feeling adventurous, like or a Blue Machine Naked Smoothie. Now, there was one drink that I didn't mention actually that I've just remembered Oasis. Oasis, yeah. That is a go to. Lots of people I've spoken to pick Oasis. I do love an Oasis, but I'm only, when I'm in the mood. When you're in the mood, yeah. Like, I've gone there before and I've gone. Lucas Aid Oasis Monster. And I'll say a good 60% of the time, I pick the monster. But yeah. the thing is, I don't carry ID with me. 
and it oh. really annoys well, me. You don't exactly look. <laughs> the amount of times at college I've been stopped. And that is a good point. That's a good me. point. I don't know if anybody else listening has had this situation, but I have genuinely. I only recently turned eighteen back in July. I have genuinely since I turned eighteen been ID'd more for an energy drink in a supermarket than I have for alcohol. I'd probably say. 80% of the time I've gone to buy a beer or something from a bar or from a supermarket. Even at, like, yeah, you know, I haven't been ID'd. Yeah. But I'd probably say half the time I pick up a can of Monster or a Red Bull, I get ID'd for it. And it baffs me. It does baff it does. me. Anyway, let's get on to the rating. Hey, Kurt, let's get on to the rating. Right. So I'm going to start off very basic mm. and I'm going to give you the Just Ham Sandwich. Now, also, I would like to say something before this starts, before I do these ratings. I don't like seeded bread. Seeded bread. <laughs> okay, yeah. I hate seeded bread. Yeah. Right? So that's the big reason I very rarely get sandwiches. Okay, yeah. It's for that reason. Okay, so let's imagine just ham sandwich. It's just plain white. Bread. It's just plain white bread. Yeah. Plain white bread. I don't mind whole wheat as well. Oh, okay. All right. All right. You're going to give you a scale. One to right. ten. Yeah, okay. Just, what would you rate? Ham. Just ham. No mayonnaise, no cheese, no nothing. Oh, just ham. Three. Two Three out of right. ten. I think I can agree with you on that, really. Um... A chicken salad sandwich. I don't mind a bit of chicken salad. I'd say... We'd say six. Six. Say Why not six. higher? Is it the salad that drops it down? Or? I'd say... The problem is with pre-packaged salad food is I don't like the taste of it. Oh, yeah. To be fair, especially in a sandwich, yeah. it just makes it sort of it's soggy. Sort of like and you don't even need it. Like it's just... Like, it's I don't there. mind. I don't mind if you put a bit of lettuce in your sandwich or something. That's fine. If you get a nice crisp bit of iceberg lettuce out of the fridge, it's lovely. thing but... is, I'm not a big, <laughs> you know, I don't like my greens. Yeah, as that's you can true. Say. I'll eat it, but I wouldn't go, I want lettuce. Yeah. Lettuce in a meal deal sandwich as well. It's just a bit wilted and gross. Isn't it? It's, it's sort of, yeah, soggy. Floppy and it's... soggy, yeah. Um, let's go with this. Used to be one of my favourites, Kurt. I'm it's a triple sandwich, sausage, bacon, and egg. Now, triple sandwich. I love the sound of it. My problem is, I'm not a big fan of egg. I don't like egg. Oh, yeah, and I don't now, think it's just normal egg. I think it's egg mayonnaise as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. Is I hate the smell Oh, yeah, of it egg. used to put me off. And it, it, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> so yeah. I'd have to say, I'd have to only give it like a... I'll, I'll give it higher than a normal ham, just because there's some flavours in yeah. there, to say the least. I'll give it a five. A five. Okay, so it's not quite a chicken salad. I think, I think personally, my rating would have gone up just because it's a triple. Now, that is a we're good both shout. pretty large people, so when I look for a meal deal, we're looking for quantity as well as quant- quality here, aren't we? So if, yeah. we can get, if we can get one and a half times a sandwich for the same price, You're you can't wrong. go wrong. But then... I'd always argue the baguettes. They're actually, yeah. Yeah, some of them. Well, okay, talking about baguettes, we'll go on to one. Southern fried chicken baguette. Now, lovely. Yeah. You know, you can't deny it, even no. though you're vegetarian. Yeah. You can't <laughs> deny it. Yep, yep, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'd have to say just southern fried chicken. Uh, I think it's got mayonnaise in it as well. Bit of mayo. Might have a bit of lettuce in Add there, a, but not that's loads. That's nice. That's nice. So it's got a bit more than just. Yeah, it's not just chicken. Nice. All right, I'd say I'll give it an eight. An eight. Oh, eight. that's quite, quite up the high. scale. Okay. Just put this into perspective. You said you always go for a cheese and ham sandwich. Mm. What would you rate that? Thing is, I wouldn't rate it that high. It's just consistency is key. Okay. You get your because yeah. you you never get a bad cheese and ham sandwich. Hey, that is a good point. That is a good point. You know, whereas I have picked up like a chicken one and I've gone, this tastes terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Um, I'll do one more. A bit cautious of time here. And I'm going to go with a tuna mayo sandwich. Do like do like tuna. But that is a very big question because a lot of people hate tuna. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's just fish, isn't it? Most Some people like it, some people hate it. I remember when I worked at Pizza Hut and there was a pizza with a with tuna on it. Ooh. I know, I never had it, <laughs> but people refused to touch the tuna. God. Even with gloves on. Well. They just didn't <laughs> like it. They were like, nope. Yeah. Some people could be a bit extra. I mean, if you're you're allergic to seafood, no, no fair enough. They just, but they just didn't want to touch it. You'd just get the ick of it then. Um, 
So I'd say I have to rate it decent because. But then it's also the problem of tuna makes the bread really soggy, and if you leave it in a fridge for over two days, nah, nah messes it up. <laughs> right. What's your What's your rating? I'd say if it's a fresh one, like re- put down there a couple of hours before. I'll give it a good seven. Seven, okay. Like I do, I do like a chewy one. Right, I'd say oh, you've got pretty average taste buds. Then I think you've got pretty average. Yeah. Not I'm, a lot I'm of stuff very you basic. Just like, I think as the podcast goes on, we bring a couple of guests on, we speak to a couple of our friends about it. I think we'll start to discover a trend, a correlation between personality traits and sandwiches. <laughs> we all deal with sandwiches. <laughs> all right, I've been. Having a look on the internet this week, Kev, and um, I found. Uh, I thought I could bring in this. It's like a, a weird fact of the week. So I've got a weird fact. I've also got a headline, a weird headline for this week as well. Okay. Um, it's sort of two weird facts this this week. I'm going to ask you the question first. Uh, no, actually, it will give away the answer. But um, oh, they'll all sort of both give away the answer. Okay, I'll ask you both. I'm the very first, stupid. First so one. The, first, the weird fact, before I ask you the question, right, yeah. is I found out today, not today, yesterday, that in Michigan, in America, it is illegal to hunt no other than unicorns. Nope. Un- unicorns. <laughs> now, let's take a second to think about that, Kurt. Yeah. Just give me a number, just a brief number here in your lifetime, how many unicorns you've ever seen. So in Michigan, no, just every anywhere in the whole world. In the whole world. Well, that's a big zero. Yeah. But I would like to say something. People in Michigan. Now I don't know the IQs no. of people in Michigan. <laughs> However, I reckon there has been someone in Michigan for that rule to pass. Yeah. Who shot a horse that he thought was a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. What well, that makes you think? I didn't think about that. For a law, for that law to pass. Surely would somebody have would have somebody would have had to do it. Yeah. So I don't know if we're missing here something here, and and Michigan is just known for its wild unicorns, <laughs> but it seems like a pretty weird law to me. It does, and I think the thing we also have to take into perspective is there are a lot of weird laws in the world. <laughs> yeah, I think I wasn't going to touch on loads of them, but I think that will make a good topic yeah, as well. Like, when I was when I was researching this, there is so many <laughs> odd laws. It's, it's really weird. Moving on, it's, the last one will give this one away. But I'll ask you the question. Do you know what the national animal of Scotland is? Unicorn? It's, the national animal, you can Google this because I'm, really? I'm not lying. The national animal of Scotland in the UK is a unicorn, a mythical unicorn. <laughs> now, now, I've got written down here the reason. I watched, watched a video about okay. this, a Scottish bloke. Struggled to understand him, but he, he said why. And that he said something about a unicorn being a image for purity, innocence, and power. Now, in anything else, that's, that's almost fair enough. Because yeah. it's, it's a symbol for their country. Yeah. But I don't know about you. I know a few Scottish people. <laughs> and more importantly, I'll add on, I know a lot of Scottish rugby players. And if there was anybody... I was going to describe as pure and innocent. It is it's not, not that, no. <laughs> Scottish rugby players. They, they are the opposite. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to say, like, for Scotland to say unicorn, it's not that bizarre because what else are they going to use? Because yep. the way I'm looking at it is what animals are native to Scotland... Which are interesting. The Loch Ness Monster. (laughs) (laughs) Well, keep it on the topic of Scotland. This is a little bit of a bonus one, but this is my news for the week because I was looking at how we can take the piss a little bit. And um, I found this this news story from um, Scotland this week. And it was a nice guy. He's a butcher in Scotland. And he actually this week sent a bag... Of haggis, I assume you know what haggis, yes, is. I know what haggis is. Sent a bag of haggis that he made in his butchery on a balloon up in the air, 
and I'll say this number because I'm sure I'm reading it right, 107,000 feet up into the atmosphere before the balloon popped and the haggis fell back to the ground. He then collected the bag of Harris, haggis and ate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no words, no um, words, no words. Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> don't ask me. If I had to guess, it's because... He's, he's been having a bit of banter with one of his mates or something and he said to his mate he went his mate was like oh what's the highest food you've ever eaten he was like what and then he just took that as they send my food yeah, really high exactly it's, it is it's a very Scottish thing to do I think sending a bag That's of haggis a hundred thousand feet up in the air <laughs> that is um... how did he know where it landed he had a camera on it, a GPS and everything. They must oh, okay. have spent ridiculous amounts of money. Does that mean that there is a video somewhere yeah, yeah. of a butcher letting haggis? Oh, it was fly on the news. Off. It was on the news. It was on. It was on daytime news in Scotland. <laughs> Could you imagine Piers Morgan just watching a man throw haggis into the sky? I just, I just, I just, it just baffles what me. What would you say? I don't. What would you say? I don't know how they've made a news story out of it. It'd be amazing if he attached a grill and it cooked while going up. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Kurt, yeah. um, I've left this sort of to the end of the podcast because I know we both weren't quite sure about what our listeners are. We don't really know what our demographic is. We don't know what people are going to listen to. But but personally, we both play rugby. That's how we met. We're quite into our rugby. We're quite into our sports. So I thought we'd leave this to the end right. because I wasn't sure if a lot of people are going to want to hear us talk about it. But, um, well, next weekend, actually, the uh, Six Nations starts. For anyone who doesn't know what the Six Nations is, uh, have you been what living under a England rock? Play? Saturday. Saturday. Both games are Saturday. And um, yeah, for anyone who does, is living under a rock, the Six Nations are England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, France, and Italy. All if compete. you got one of them wrong, I would have laughed. Yeah. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> they all compete in a six way tournament. Yeah. Um, usually, Italy. Usually it's almost like a group like stage. Yeah, it's like a big group stage. Um, I'll get the fixtures up because I thought it could be a weekly thing, at least while the Six Nations are going, that we put our predictions in for okay. you know the Six Nations. So what I'll, what I'll ask you first, Kurt, right. is who do you think will win this year? Now, I'm not going to lie. I haven't paid too much attention since the Autumn Cup, whatever yep. it was called. Um, I'd say England played pretty well during that. Yep. Wales were a bit... Shaky, yeah. to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Ireland are always a good threat. Yeah. You know, you've got what, people just... France. France, very good oh, recently. They're on the up. They're on they the up. very good recently. Italy, just, you know, we'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's um, let's not joke about this. <laughs> no, let's not. Because if they beat England, could you imagine? Well... Well, well, we'll see, Kurt. I'll, I'm going to push you for an answer here. Right. Who do you All think right. is going to win the Six Nations this year? I'm going to say England. Very patriotic. But I reckon it will be close. Yeah, I think I'm going to put my prediction in the early doors. I, I think England will take the cup again this year. Yeah. No but like, I think it will be, yeah. There'll be no Grand Slam. I think I think the biggest contender other than um, England is France. They're on the up. Let's be honest, they nearly won it last they, year. They've got, they've got a very young team. I think when they cut the Six Nations in half last year and made us play it over the entire year because of Corona... They would have won it. Wales, uh, not Wales, definitely not Wales. France <laughs> would have stolen that Six Nations. Yeah. They were on a massive thing. And At I the end of the day, they, stole they, they have recruited... Some new coaches. They have a ridiculously young, strong side, and it, they're doing it to build up. They they they're hosting the next world the next World Cup in France, twenty twenty three, and they're building towards it. So they're bringing in this young side, and they're giving them international caps, and they're getting them ready to sort of put in a big fight for their World Cup. And they're doing a good job. So I think they will put up a good fight against England. If anyone is going to lose, if anyone's going to beat England this year. I think it will be France. I now can talk, imagine a talk shot. About, yeah, talk about Wales under Wayne Pivac and his new coaches. He has had a stinker, major, major stinker. Yeah. Um, Wales have got a pretty tough game. They're hosting Ireland on Sunday. 
That's um, tough. That would be quite tough. Italy are hosting France at home. France and I'd like to think we've got a pretty... Well, we can't really take Scotland for granted because they're, they're, def- they're, they're a strong they side. They play strong against yeah. us as well. Um, yeah, and it'll be a big game, but we've got we've got Scotland at home on Saturday afternoon. So I'll ask you just quickly. Are we doing a score prediction? Give me, um, or are we just doing a prediction? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take your score prediction down, Kurt. So the first game is Italy versus France. What is your score prediction? I'm expecting at least, I'll say 30, 38. Um, to France, well, I can, honestly, I reckon they could probably get seven. <laughs> thirty-eight, seven. That's yeah. your, or seven thirty-eight because you're at home. Seven thirty. Okay. Um, I leave the England game now. We'll go for the Sunday game. Wales versus Ireland. What's your um, prediction? It's a tight game. I think it will be tight. Wales, Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Wales I mean, out be a of lot form. Of kicks, a lot of kicking. Yeah, always is. Always is. So Northern Hemisphere rugby kick the ball all the time. It's a tough one today. It really is. I'm trying to think it's through. Well, go on. Do your prediction for thing. I'll put I'll put my Italy and France prediction in. I'm going to say a safe, very very safe bonus point win for France, and I'm going to put. Um, I'm going to go similar. I'm going to think Italy are going to come out with a bit of a bang. I think they'll get a bit more points than seven. So I'm going to go with 42-12. I'm going to go with that, or 12-42. I'm going to say like four Wales Ireland. Yep. I'm going to go 13-21. 13-21. I'll tell you what, Kurt. You've got it close. Personally, I don't think Wales will bring anything that close. I think... They had a stinker before. They'll have a stinker again. I think and they're going to put up a big fight first. Ireland game. want this Six Nations. Ireland want it. And they I do. think they're going to want it a lot more. And I'm going to go with a... Uh, I'm going to go with a bonus point win for Ireland. I'm going to go with 35-15. 35-15 to Ireland, I think. That's my prediction. Now the big one, Kurt. England v Scotland. Now, in recent years, they've brought it very fucking close. <laughs> They have. So what what is your predictions? I'd say seventeen thirty eight. To England or to England. Okay, seventeen thirty eight. Alright, it'll be a high scoring one. I think so too. Be a, it'd be a good one. Um I'm gonna I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Um, so it is a weird one. I think the thing is with England is before any competition starts, is we go, I don't know how good we're going to be. Yeah. <laughs> because we just don't. Yeah. Really exactly. You don't. We're very it. inconsistent. I'm going to go 28 12 to England. I don't think it'll be. I don't think we'll run away with it, but it will be safe. It will be a safe bet. Okay. I'll save that in there. And I'd also put our predictions down that we've both got England to win the Six Nations this year. Yeah. Um, what else, Kurt? We've got the EPL. EPL. We, we're competing in Fantasy League for the Premier League this year. You can call it competing. Well, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I wasn't expecting you to try and slate me this early. Um, put this into context here. I'll go on to my EPL app. I've had a stinker this year. Kurt is taken away a little bit at the top of the table right now and I tell. am dead last <laughs> completely and utterly dead last uh, I had a good week last week but um, Kurt is top at the moment with 1,196 points and that is before this game and that is before this weekend of games and I am bottom with 879 <laughs> now I did I did try when I, when I first made my team this year I did try but after the first weekend, I put a couple of players who were in form, scoring goals, like Harry Kane and Human Son. I put them both in my side because they had great games in the first weekend. They've been brilliant. So I brought them in because, logically, that's what you do when you're making a fantasy league. You bring in form players in to get more points. The next game, they have an absolute stinker. And the players that I've taken out of my team have great. And after a couple of weeks of mixing my team about and getting some really rubbish results, I just gave up. But um, I'm going to put a bet on, Kurt. I didn't tell you about this before the podcast, but I'm going to put a bet on. I'm intrigued. 
It's not going to be a huge bet, but I am nearly 200 points adrift at the bottom of the league. Yeah. I'm going to put a bet on with you, Kurt. Just a tenner, just a tenner for tenor. now. We'll see how it goes. That I do not finish last this year. We are we are past the halfway point, and I am I'm not gaining on anybody, but I'm gonna I'm gonna focus. My I'm problem is done. with that bet. Steph doesn't do it anymore. That's, okay, 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 okay. Steph and Victor are very close. There's only forty points between them. Victor doesn't do it either. Yeah, he does. He keeps talking about it. Okay, I'll get Victor involved. I'll get Victor involved. I'll get Victor to start making his team again. And I will not finish below Victor or Steph. I'll put a tenner on it. I'll shake Tenor your hand says, right now. Tenor says, I'll beat you by the end of this year by a gap of at least 100, 180. 180 points. All right, I can beat you. We're shaking on it. So, Kurt, you've got to beat me by more than 180 points, and Deal. I have to finish higher than third or higher than fourth. I'll, I'll argue try and take Tyler, but I don't think that's Oh, I possible. don't know. He's a bit too far. He's nearly um, 300 points, isn't he? 200. 200. 200 and something. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that, Kurt. Pleasure doing business with you. I'm going to have to actually focus on this now. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, that's easy money, you know. Easy money. <laughs> easy money. What's your score this week? Uh, what's yours? I'm on 44, but I've still got some to play. <laughs> And 40, this is 44. Gonna, do you want to know how bad my week is? Uh, I put Sterling in, captained him, vice captain Cancelo, neither of them played. That's your bad week, is it? Yes. Do, you want to, um, do you want to hear my. Take a guess at how many points I've got, Kurt. You're on 40, did you say? 44. 44. Yeah, so many I'm on. 12. No, not that bad. 20. <laughs> I've got 20 points, and I have, I have Son left to play. I've got him captain. Son and Alderweireld have left to play. So as long as Son scores a hat trick and assists ten goals, I'm happy. I can gain on people, but um, apart from that, I'm going to need to make some changes. I think you will as well. Yeah, de- definitely. All right. Last subject. Last subject because yep. it was a suggestion we had in one of our comments. Is the heavyweight division at the moment in boxing? Now I thought we could leave this for a future podcast because. Hopefully in the next, well, probably not the next few months, but in the, in the near future, there will be an announcement about a rather large fight. Some would say the fight of the decade between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. Yes. Now, I don't know if you've been keeping an eye on the heavyweight division recently in the last couple of months, but it's heated. Very. It's very heated. Much. There is so many good heavyweights about. But for now, I want us to focus on Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Who's going to win? I'd have to say Fury. Okay. And you know what, Kurt? Anybody that knows me is I'm a a, a big Anthony Joshua fan. I'm a big Anthony Joshua fan. So if you asked me the question of who I wanted to win, I'd say AJ. AJ. But... If you ask me the question of who I think is going to win, going by current form, Tyson Fury. I would also 100%. like to point out, one of the first times I stayed over Alex's, there was a fight on. Oh, AJ, AJ versus Klitschko. Klitschko. That was a hell of a night. Klitsch, he was, Alex was nearly crying. <laughs> nearly? <laughs> I was genuinely in tears. It was, what, well, AJ won that one, knockout in the 11th round. Yes. In but- the three rounds before, AJ was knocked down. And I was genuinely in tears. I was crying. I was so upset. I'm such a big fanboy. But um, yeah. So we are to say it briefly, going to be trying to watch. Yeah. AJ. Oh yeah. Fury to say it together. to say it briefly, I think Tyson Fury is going to win, as long as AJ doesn't change up completely. He uh, Fury's got it. But that's not to say that with any big fight like this. Fury will win, but punch. there will be another rematch. Yeah. That will rematch after rematch, just like Deontay Wilder. Well, it will go on for years. With, it can only take one punch from AJ. Yeah, exactly. So clip just, that's, heavyweight, like that. that's the heavyweight division, isn't it? The, the, exactly. the Deontay Wilder fight could have been a lot more different if, if there was one extra punch from Wilder, because that's, that's all he is, really, isn't he? He's a, he's a heavy one puncher. One punch, man. One punch, <laughs> and that fight could have been over. It didn't yeah. matter how good Fury would have fought if he got punched at the right, in the right place. At the right time, it's the end. But, um, 
yeah, I thought we could leave that subject for, for a big podcast, for at least for when the fight is announced, and we can we can speak about that. We'll see what people have got to say about this bit of a sporty section. I'm not sure what people will yes. think, but um, uh, I think I think that's just about it. I think we're coming to the end of our our podcast, and um, I mean, I'd, if I'd... anyone is still listening, yes, I would. Um... <laughs> Please let us know. We'll put a post out on Instagram if you have listened to the end. Drop a comment and just what should we tell them to say? You've got to say something. That's Nobody else will think of. Yeah. Nobody else will think of. Say bananas. 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 Comment sure. bananas on our post if you listen to the end. We would also both of us like to say if there's any ideas yeah. of what you want us to talk about. Because at the end of the day, we're doing a podcast for everyone to listen to. Yeah. It's not just me and Alex. Yeah, exactly. Talking. We could like, we could waffle about what we do on Xbox, but I'm, people might want to hear about that. <laughs> um, this, yeah, this this first podcast it definitely helped people giving us suggestions. So yeah. um, when we wrap, as we round this podcast off, um, I'd just like to say if you do have any suggestions or any questions, anything personal, I'll put a poll out on Instagram today. I'll make a, an anonymous one as well. If there's any personal questions that people would like us to discuss me and kurt we're not um experts oh, but we'd, not. we'd love to help we'd love to discuss it um and if if it does help anyone then you know we're glad and so just another thing at the end of the day we are just doing this as a you know it's yeah. something to do but we would also like to see how often would the people want to yeah exactly to upload a if you yeah if, if you like seeing this we could probably squeeze throughout a week maybe coming into the future but yeah, I reckon so. we'll we'll see what people want to we we'll see what people want to hear but for yeah. now if you have any suggestions about anything try to keep it away from s- sandwiches again but um if you <laughs> if you've got any serious suggestions or questions this pasta let us know conversation dm us this will be up on spotify and youtube hopefully tonight or monday morning and um all will be good if you have any questions, DM us, put it on our Instagram story, comment on our YouTube, um, even email us. We have an email, um, tabletoppodcast1 at gmail.com. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, um, if you did enjoy the first episode, please let us know. We've never done anything like this before. Nah, so it's all new. We'd, yeah, we'd like to know if people are actually listening. If, 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 you, you, do, do, like if you do it, enjoy, share it, say, yeah. tell somebody. Yeah, share it about. I mean, we're not. We are just doing this as a bit of fun. A couple of mates having a bit of fun, and and if we'd like people to enjoy themselves. So if you do enjoy it, tell your mates. Share it on your Instagram. Share it on your YouTube. Anything. Um, we thank you for listening. We hope it wasn't too boring, and um, we'll see you next week. Yep. Till then. Adios. See you later. See you later.